Uh, state your name, please. Michelle Miller. Uh, Ms. Miller has had the opportunity to go over her license of rights and has no questions on this. Um, she's here in a violation. She is going to enter a plea of guilty. Wish to address the court prior to sentencing, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Miller, did you go over this two page program advice of rights form? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. And did you sign and date the second page of it? Yes, ma'am. All right. Nope. No. It's not signed and dated. I'm sorry. But um, if you, Mr. Siki, if you can get her to go over that real quick. Morning. Yes. All right, Ms. Miller, you understand you have a right to an attorney if you can afford one. We'd appoint one. You have Mr. Gazicki appointed. You understand all that, right? Yes, ma'am. And you understand you have the right to a hearing if you wanted a hearing. Yes. Yep. And you understand at that hearing, you'd have a right to see, hear, and question all witnesses against you. You'd have a right to be a witness for yourself or remain silent. If you testify, your testimony would be considered by the same standards as everyone else's testimony. And if you chose not to testify, no one could comment on your refusal to testify. And I would not presume or infer uh, that as any evidence of guilt because you exercise that right. You understand that? Yes. And you understand you have a right to be proven innocent or to be presumed innocent until you're proven guilty. Um, by a preponderance of the evidence. It's a probation violation hearing, so that's 51%. You understand that? Yes, ma'am. You also have a right to call witnesses to speak for you at trial or at the hearing, and I would sign a subpoena to get them here if that was needed. You understand that? Yes, ma'am. All right, the allegation, Ms. Miller, is that you tested positive for alcohol uh, and had a PBT at 0 0.07 on August 9th at 9 a.m. And you tested positive for alcohol and had a PBT at 0 0.06 on August 9th at 9.04 a.m. And that you admitted to drinking on August 8th. How do you, how do you please? Guilty. You understand you'd be waiving the right to the hearing if I accept that plea. There'll be no hearing of any kind. Yes, All right, I'm going to accept the plea as knowing and voluntarily given. Uh, Your Honor, what I'm going to say to the court is not an excuse for her conduct, but I just want the court to know that something that apparently is beyond her control. On the day of the incident, or the day prior to being tested, her daughter uh, was rushed into the hospital for surgery. That it was just another straw on the camel's back. Uh, she reports in the last two months she's been trying to get evict her boyfriend or ex boyfriend from her house um, be, you know, because of his negative con uh, conduct. Uh, she's facing a foreclosure. Uh, everything's just been overwhelming on her. She doesn't want to be, or she's asking the court that the court would reconsider about uh, removing her from the. Uh, uh, sobriety court. She realizes she does need help. She was in rehab uh, last fall and seemed to be doing doing very well until the end of May when all these problems started multiplying and she had the trouble of coping with it. Uh, yeah, there are 93 days in jail. I don't. I, I'm asking the court to reconsider that. Uh, maybe some sort of rehab program uh, would help her out better. Uh, all we can say, Your Honor, it's not like a deliberate violation where, you know, some people come into this court and they don't have any reason. They just decided they want to drink. Yeah. She's got situations she can't cope with and she needs some sort of guidance and help and begging a court for it, Your Honor. Here's the problem with Miss Miller. And this this is very difficult. This is a tough hearing for everybody in the room right now, or at least her and I and Miss Hatner. Miss Miller has been in the, has this case back from 2021. She was originally on standard probation and she kept drinking on standard probation. She'd never been in trouble before. So that was indicative to everybody involved in the case that she probably needed an elevated level of treatment. So she was brought into treatment court. When she was brought into treatment court, she continued, continued we had her in an IOP, which was a level of care that the therapist thought was appropriate. And she started escalating. She was not just using alcohol, she started using crack. 
So then she went to, we did everything we could right away and everything I am saying is true and you know it. We did everything we could right away to get her in, get her better treatment. She got a bed in Naomi's nest um, and went to Naomi's nest for uh, inpatient residential treatment. She was in for how long, Ms. Haver? 45 days. Yeah, it was quite, it was a long, I mean, it wasn't like the, she was in for seven days for detox. She stayed in 45 days. She came out, she was going to hit the ground running. When did she get out, Ms. Haver? Uh, it was sometime in January that she yeah. went immediately into IOP. Yeah, and then we got her immediately in the IOP. So she's now done 45 days inpatient second bout of IOP. She's learning all these coping skills. I mean, that's what they go there for, right? You're using all, you're learning all of these different ways that you can react to stressful situations or triggering situations besides use. We got her into peer recovery. She was an IOP. She continued to use. She after. finished IOP the second time okay. and then went to standard, right? She was just doing her, seeing her therapist every, every week, going to group every week, right, Kelsey? Correct. Correct me when I'm wrong. And then she started using crack again. Uh, cocaine, yes. Well, yep. okay. Uh, and then she had a violation for that in May. She didn't show up for testing in June. She missed IOP in July. She had two positive cocaine tests in May after completing a second round of IOP. Yes, this was within a month of completing. And at that time, we put her back into IOP again. She's, she's, she's now in her third round of IOP. So she is currently in treatment three days a week. Plus, she sees her own therapist, right? Once a week, correct. Once a week. Do you go to group, that group once a week, too? Yeah, okay. You see Sarah still? Yes. So she's got a peer recovery coach. You go to her meeting? Yes. And you go to AA a couple times a week. So, I mean, other than jail, there's nothing else I can do for Miss Miller. Miss Miller doesn't get like it. We just heard this lady speak at Families Against Narcotics uh, at an event this Opioid Awareness Month. Beaumont put something out. What was her name? Tiffany Jenkins. And she's in recovery and she talked about being in recovery and she said she did two inpatient stints. The first one she did it because the government told her she had to, to avoid jail. And she didn't really, she went through the motions, she did what she had to do and she got out. The second time she did it, she had completely hit rock bottom and she knew she needed to change. And that's when she quit using. And Miss Miller, I don't know where rock bottom is, but she's not in this program. It's clear to me she's not using any of the resources we've thrown at her because, because she just continues to have use violations. She has all of these tools. All of these people she could call. She knows she could come sit in the court if she wanted to. She could call Kelsey. She could call her peer recovery coach. She could call her therapist. She could call one of the 15 girls in our in our, our peer group, um, in the women's group that I know she has relationships with. And she could have done all of these things. She could have went to a meeting. She could have used all of these tools and instead she decided to use and then she came to court drunk. Knowing full well she's gonna, I mean, she's still drunk from the night before. You know, like, that could be a, another cry for help. Uh, you know, I know that there are a lecture that you heard, the lady went uh, two times to ILP. You know, this may be her rock bottom, and it'd be a shame to give up hope and to throw her in jail, just throwing her to the wolves. Also, Yana, if I could just uh, mention, if the court is going to uh, incarcerate her, if she can have a startup day, she's got two minor children at home and the ch child's father is finally doing something. He never supported them, but uh, he's filing for custody. So she does have to make arrangements for those two minor children. Yeah, the um, problem is with keeping her in any capacity is we don't have time. Like she's got to have, we have phases in the program. She's in phase two. Right. So she just had a violation. So now it'd be 90 days without a violation before she could go to phase three. And then she's supposed to do how long in phase three, Ms. Havner? A minimum of three months. A minimum of three months. And so that all together is <clears throat> six months? 
that we need, and how long do we have her? Until January 5th, so about five months. We don't have time for her to graduate. We don't have time for her to finish the program. And if you're successful during that time, it'll be well worth it, though. And then 90 days is also guaranteed that there is no further violations or use violations. Um, so it's not even a guarantee to advance within 90 days. I, I, you know, I know I'm not actively involved in sobriety court, but my understanding is incarceration for long terms really does not help in addiction. It doesn't, but yeah. neither does keep helping and helping and helping someone who doesn't want help. Like at some point, it's like I'm just screaming off a mountaintop. She's not listening. She's not taking advantage of any of the resources. I just don't see. I just don't see the point in it. And it's heartbreaking. And it's so sad. And Miss Miller's been with us for a long time. And it's like we start to see her make progress. And then she reverts right back. And she's reverted right back to the point where I don't know if I can keep her. And I don't think she's expecting this. I thought she, I think she thought she could use, and it was going to be like all the other times, but now time's running out. And if she's not learned anything yet, I don't know that she's going to. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at, Judge. I mean, you know, they say incarceration is not going to help, but clearly recovery is not helping her either. Um, she did reach out to her peer recovery coach that day, but she didn't even talk to her about wanting to use or about to use. So, I mean, she's not going to take the step further to tell people, hey, I'm at my rock bottom. This is what's going on. I don't see how much else we can help her. She's not utilizing her tools to the best of her ability. Yeah, her today is, today's not an eye opener for Ms. Miller. Nothing would be. And the court still has time to keep her in the program. And, it, you know, down the road, you know, didn't two weeks, three weeks, you can still throw her in jail for 90 days. Miss Hatter, didn't she just do five days in county on her last violation? She did four days, Judge. In Wayne County Jail. Look at little Miss Miller. She, if, if four days in Wayne County Jail, and then how long she been in now? Five. So she did four days so in Wayne County Jail in May, and the same day that she came out, she used couple She days. used. I'm and, sorry, it was two and a half days I was there. Okay, so two and a half days later, and she got right out and used, so that didn't work. And then she's been in for four or five days now. That sort of supports the argument that the jail doesn't help an addiction. Yeah, what? right, but neither does therapy in Ms. Miller's case or any of the other tools she or she keeps using anyway. She had a couple of months there where she was sober and not, no violations. Um, I mean, well, we're 18 months along and she's still not using her resources. I mean, that's very alarming. Yeah, I mean, at this point, these should be proximate goals. Like these are these should be things that she's able to do. I, I don't know, Ms. Miller. I can't see any. I did put the younger, the minor children's uh, father on the consent form, so I can call him following this hearing to get a reach contact. Um, for the children, so the children will be fine. Uh, the other two are adult children. I'm sorry. It's an individual who barely supported the children, and now he's trying to seize on this opportunity. But. It is what it is. It is what you made it. Yes, it is. It's yes, what you made, yes, Miss Miller. This isn't. It is what it is. No. This is your reality because you created yes, this reality. I, I apologize for saying that. I mean, this is. You know, is it good for the kids, for the ma to be, you know, doing crack and coke and no. drinking when she's looking at all this jail time? I'm, I'm, this, these are rhetorical questions. I mean, we all know the answer. All right, I'm going to call this other matter. Miss Miller can just sit for a minute. That's according to the guidance center. Like, they can't think of anything else other than three stints in IOP and a residential that would help Miss Miller you know, learn some coping mechanisms or deal with whatever trauma she has, you know, and this is still her first response, even with everything that we've provided. I'm going to give her some credit for the time she's been in the program. I'm sorry, Kelsey, I lost your paper. Ms. Miller, you can still do this on your own when you're ready. If you continue down this path, I'm confident I'll see you again. What? I don't want to be like that anymore. All right. I'm going to give her 80 days. 
Mentions. Credit. We start out date. 11. No, start now. 